struggling because of going back into this lockdown or aren't you just spend a moment connecting with God reaffirm your identity in him death could not hold you fail to
praise we could ever pray. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Sing Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Sing, holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside.
shaken Not by a pandemic Not by depression Not by isolation Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to Jenica, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday Jenica, I hope you had a really great day and have a blessed year ahead, lots of love. Good morning everybody, my name's Jake, I'm going to be doing some church news. First of all, welcome to the service, I hope you've been blessed by it so far. Let's get cracking with the church news. So, first up we've got connect groups. They've started up again and loads of them are available around Norwich. Obviously it's all going to be on Zoom, no in-person connect groups at the minute. But if you'd like to join one or find out more, please do email Alfred at the email address shown on your screens right now. Next up is our men's virtual event coming up Saturday the 6th of February at 10am. The Zoom login details are on your screen ready for your joining pleasure. I would recommend you get along to one of these if you are indeed a man. From the feedback that we've received they've been well received and really really good fun so get involved. Next up we've got a church fast and online prayer day coming up. That is Saturday the 30th of January at 7.30am start and then all the way through till 7.30pm. There's going to be two Zoom calls, one to open the prayers at 7.30 and one to close them at 7pm and we're going to be praying for our church, our country and the worldwide pandemic asking God to intervene. Lastly, weekly prayers are starting up again. Uh, they'll be starting from the 27th of January, uh, beginning at 7pm and ending at 7.30. So it's a nice quick one for you. Uh, and all the Zoom stuff is on the screen for you to have a look at right now. Just take a note of it and obviously we'll be posting it on social media throughout the time as well so that you'll be able to join on there too. So that's everything for church news this week. We're now going to take up our offering and then after that we will be taking the declaration and then Alfred will be preaching. So God bless and enjoy the rest of the service. I declare today that I'm ready to hear from God. I'm tuning my heart into his word. I believe that Jesus is Lord, that his promises are true, and that his word lasts forever. I believe that what I hear today could change my life because my best days are yet to come in Jesus' name. Hi, good morning. Welcome once again to our online service. And uh, today I'm starting a new uh series which I have entitled God is God is now as humankind we have that tendency to really shift our attention and focus to whatever is happening or prevailing at a given time so from time to time it is really good for us to uh, take stock or more or less reflect on who God is and in other words, get to know actually what God is saying or doing in that particular time. So with this series, I want to just draw our attention to who God is, who God really, really is. And uh, I believe that as we do that, you know, and find out who God is, it will 
shape our thinking. It will give us a deeper understanding and impact our lives, even for this year and the years ahead. Yes, God is so many things. God is love. God is uh, many things to us. But there are some key points of who God is that I want to uh, zero in in this series. Now, today I've entitled my message, God is Almighty. And by the way, this is a part one of, uh, you know, the other two series that I will be giving. So God is Almighty. God is Almighty. Now, let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 and 2. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. So the verse 1 says that, God appeared to Abraham and says, I am God Almighty. I want you to underline that, you know, if you're using a hard copy Bible or circle it if you're using, uh, you know, a, a, an iPad or something else like my, what I'm doing. Now, to understand why God is telling Abraham that I am God Almighty, we need to go back to when God began to move or to connect with Abraham. And it, it, it's really from Genesis chapter 12. We know from Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 onwards, that God first came to Abraham, told Abraham, come out of your father's uh, household to a land that I will show you. And uh, we popularly call that the call of Abraham. Now, Abraham was 85 years old when God called him. And I want us to remember that year as well, 85 years old when God called him. And from there, that time onwards, mm -hmm. God appeared to Abraham in various points. And chapter 17, according to theologians, is the fifth appearance of God to Abraham. And in total, from the time Abraham met God to this very particular time, chapter 17, it's about 24 years in total. So God tells Abraham, in chapter 17, verse 1, the Lord appears to Abraham and says, I am God Almighty. I am God Almighty. Now, the term God Almighty or Almighty God comes from the Greek root word, El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Uh, El Shaddai really will appear, appears about 218 times in, uh, you know, uh, the scriptures. El really there really means God, the strong one, the strong one. And Shaddai means the breasted one. So here God is painting a picture of who he is to Abraham, where he's saying that I am God uh, Almighty, which means the strong nourisher, strength giver, satisfier, all bountiful, the supplier of the needs of the people. So that is how God makes or uh, uh, tells Abraham who he is in the circumstance that he finds himself in. But why does he do that? Why does he really have to tell Abraham that I am God Almighty? And uh, if we go back to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, we realize, as I've said before, that God told Abraham to leave his father as a household, I mean, where he had settled, which was Haran, and move somewhere else that he was going to show him. Now, Abraham obeys God and takes Sarah and everything he has, including lots, and then he moves to the promised land that God was going to show him. Verse 7 of chapter 12 makes us aware that Abraham got there because it reads this way, And the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring 
I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Which means Abraham got there. He got to the land and God comes and affirms that this is a place. This is actually where I was telling that you're going to come in. And this land is a promise I make to you and I'm going to pass it on to your offspring. But we get to chapter 12 verse 10 and something really happens which I want us to take notes here. Then there was a famine in the land. So there was a famine in the land and Abraham went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. Whoa. Now, this really tells us that stuff were happening to Abraham. God had called him, God told him to get to the land. He gets to the land. He finds the land. He stays on the land. Now, he comes to even affirm that this is a place. So you just say, well, I've arrived. Maybe I should start to settle down, find a piece of land, build my land, uh, house, uh, where the cattle are going to be, the cattle shed. And maybe I should find out if there's a butcher somewhere where I, you know, I'll be going to. Uh, Mrs. Abraham might be thinking, well, maybe, uh, I don't know if there was a, a hairdresser, but decide, let me find where the hairdresser is because this is a place, this is it we've come to. But the Bible says suddenly, there is famine in the land. I know many people have argued, uh, uh, you know, so why didn't Abraham stay in a place, a man of faith? But the Bible makes us aware that, you know, this time the famine was very severe, which means that actually caused Abraham to move to go down to Egypt. So hang on a minute. I mean, God is supposed to bring me to a place, bless me, make me feel great, and here I am with farming. And when he goes to Egypt as well, he actually lands into another trouble altogether. This time, he gets into problem and trouble with the ruler of Egypt, Pharaoh himself. And he could have almost lost his life. Church, what I want you to understand is that Abraham and Sarah were, were no superheroes. When we read their story in the Bible, we say, oh, wow, this guy was a guy of faith. I wish I was like Abraham. But he was living a life and he was going through stuff. Yes, God promised him to move forward, gave him a land. He went to that land. But in walking, he faced challenges. He faced obstacles, you know. And uh, as Christ flows, I think it's a good thing for us to reflect because Times when we go through stuff, we think, how can it be if I have been walking with God? How can it be that this happens to me, that happens to me? You know, Paddy has preached a message many time ago that why does, you know, bad stuff happen to good people? Yes, and at times bad things happen to good people. And here we are seeing it. The guy was called by God. God appeared to him many times, more than most of us, but still... He faced a famine. You know, last year, December 2020, I just began to reflect on the kind of year that we had gone through personally, as a people, a country, the world, and indeed Christ followers, because no one has been spared with what has been going around in the world last year which seems to be carrying on even this year. And I just went, it sort, of, sort of go to, went to God to ask, why are these things happening? What is happening? Because you see, with this pandemic, it's not actually the virus that is causing a lot of havoc, but it is actually the effect of the virus. Whenever we go to lockdown, you hear a major company has folded up. People have been losing their jobs. Businesses have been winding down and homes and et cetera have been going through tough time. So it's been a tough year. Last year was a tough year, was a challenging year. And I just said, Lord, can you just intervene, please? We need your intervention. But this was a kind of situation which I can liken that 
the man of faith, the father of faith, Abraham and Sarah, were going through. So you are not alone if you face some of these things. Don't beat yourself too hard. And, but the key thing is that in the midst of all that they were going through, God does something. The Bible says that God appeared to Abraham. He appears to him and he says that, I am God Almighty. He reveals himself as God Almighty, which, by the way, I had already defined to you. And today I want you to know, if you are listening to me, that God is telling you that he is God Almighty. God is Almighty, as the series goes. He is Almighty. He is still in control of our life and affairs of men. That makes him almighty. God is almighty. And he is with Abraham. He was telling Abraham that I am the faithful one. I will multiply you. I will give life and restore your life and that of Sarah. I am still with you despite what you are going through. God is with you. You are not alone. If you are listening to me, God is almighty. El Shaddai is on your side. He is with you. Remember that. He is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. As we have gone through a difficult year and we start this year, I want this to be your mindset. I want to encourage you to make this understanding that God is almighty, your mindset. Let it be your mindset. Fix your eyes on this truth. Fix your eyes on this God. Fix your eyes that no matter what you are going through, what steps you are going to be taking, God is almighty. God is with you. God will not leave you alone. God didn't leave Abraham. He appeared to him to reaffirm who he is with him. And Apostle Paul says this in Romans 8 verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Now, let me put it this way. If God is for you and for me, who can be against us? What can be against us? The same Romans chapter 8 verse 35 says, says this, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, the sword, pandemic, coronavirus? No. Would they separate us from the love of God? Would these things cause us to move away from the love of God. Remember, I was saying that it is so easy when things are happening for us to focus on the things that are happening so much that gradually we move our attention from God. But God is reminding us in the midst of all this, He is still almighty. He is still on our side. He is still on the throne. And Paul says, First Romans 8 verse 37 says, No. He asks a question. Shall all these things separate us from the love of God? Would they move us away from the love of God? Would they tear us apart from God's love? God's, you know, and he says, No. All things, in all things, Romans chapter 8 verse 37 says, In all these things, we are more than conqueror. Through him who loves us. Church, God loves us. God has us on his agenda. God visited Abraham because he had a plan for him. Because he had already spoken over his life. And yes, it was still 24 years after he first spoke to Abraham. But God still remembered him. When we say God is almighty, it, it, it reminds us of what a woman who is giving birth and taking care of their young one, breastfeeding them, etc. And God is making us aware that 
he cares for us. He is almighty because he cares for us. And he is making a statement that I am almighty. I created the heaven and earth. And if you are on my side, I will see you through life. Just as he said to Abraham and Sarah, let this be your mindset this year. Yes, last year was a tough year, but this year, make it your point to remember, to rehearse, to remind yourself, write it somewhere in your room, in your car, write it somewhere on your phone, let it be your, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever it's called, when you start your phone, it comes on. And let it remind you with a beep, God is almighty. He knows you, he sees what you're going through, and he has you on his mind. He will never leave you where you are. This year, even as we start this year, I'm bringing this mercy to encourage you that this year God will move with you. God will take you to where he wants you to be. That is why he visited Abraham to ensure that he's taking the steps that will take him where he has to go. You will make it. You will be all that God has made you and caused and spoken over your life. It will come to pass. I want to assure you, yes, things might have been tough. The pandemic still rage, but God is still almighty. He is still on the throne. He cares for his people. He cares for his people. He cares for you. And nothing will separate us from the love of God. And nothing will draw us away from the love of God. He is almighty. He also tells Abraham in uh, chapter 1 uh, of, of verse 17, Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 and 2, and he says, Walk before me faithfully and blamelessly, then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Now, I want to encourage you that in the midst of whatever we're going through, fix your eyes on God's word. Fix your eyes on whatever God has said and is doing. I said it uh, as we closed last uh, year. Take whatever we're teaching. Pastor Paddy is teaching uh, uh, he's uh, giving me the opportunity to teach and whatever we're doing serious and have your own plan to get into God's word as much as you can and take God's word. Because you see, as we, God's word comes in, uh, he will take us where we have to go. God is on the throne. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. With this series, I want to remind you so much God is, who God really is. And I'm telling you today that God is almighty. Next week, I will be continuing with this uh, series and I'm going to tell you that God is our shield and our reward. And we'll carry on with how God dealt with Abraham and how he moved him forward to ensure that what he planned for his life came to pass. You are a child of the Most High God. We sing that song, I am a child of God, and you are a child of God. I want you to remember over and over, you are a child of God. You are the one that God sent Jesus on the cross for. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You are a child and he thinks about you. There is something great in store for you this year and the years ahead. I speak into your life that this year will be a good year. I speak into your life that this year God will open doors. I speak into your life that as you take steps this year to move forward, may God order your steps. I speak that the years that you've loss and things that you have lost last year may God give you a, a, a reward may he may he compensate you for all the challenges that you have gone through I declare over your life that God will lift you up and make you great it is never over until God tells you that it is over next week we're going to carry on and I promise you we are going to go even further to 
learn about God is. As I bring this service to our close, I want to give an opportunity to those who are hearing but really haven't made that decision to follow Jesus or invite Jesus into their life. Perhaps you then you say, well, I mean, all these things doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, you can uh, start with God by inviting him into your life. So why don't you pray with me? Just pray alongside me and say, Heavenly Father, I've heard your word that you are God Almighty. Boy, I need more of you in me to be almighty in my life. Come into my life. I believe Jesus and what he did on the cross. From today, I let go of my past and I invite you to come and live in me, rule over my life. Help me to know more and more about you. Wash me with that precious blood of Jesus and make me your own. I receive you and I've made a decision to follow you and there's no turning back. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed this prayer, why don't you send us a message on our website so that we can stand with you and help you grow. But for the rest of you who already know the Lord, I want to tell you that God is almighty and that almighty God will order your life, will take you where you have to go. This year we are going to run up and we are going to move forward. Our God owns this world. And I bless you. May it be a wonderful week for you and may this man be a great man for you. God bless you.